good morning. Welcome home to Baylor's Landing. I'm Sue and it is humid as it's really humid. So glad we could hang out today. Mike is here and he has brought over a metric busload of mushrooms that he found and they're edible mushrooms um, that are Berkeley polypore. Chicken of the woods adjacent. I I'll let him tell us more about it when we go on inside and I'm gonna trim down some garlic scapes because I think they might be good eaten. Where did you, this is, holy crap, so much. Yeah, so I, I picked this up at the, uh, um, the Quabbin Reservoir. Um, nice. So um, yeah, this is actually not even, this is maybe about 30% of what was actually at the mushroom itself. Um, I just took the most tender parts of it and left the rest of the bugs. Um, but, um, yeah, this is probably anywhere from like seven to 10 pounds of mushroom. Nice. Right now we're going through and processing all of these lovely little leaves of Berkeley polypore. Um, it looks very similar to the chicken of the woods. However, um, their pores are much, Ooh. much larger and more noticeable. When wow. I, when I first saw this, I thought it was Lady Porus cincinnatus, which is uh, a species of chicken of the woods known for its white underside. It's the nicer of the variety to have. Um, but when I noticed that I could actually see the web of pores, I knew. How do we know that this is what it is? Uh, well, because it was growing at the base of an oak stump. And these are colloquial, colloquially named stump blossoms. Stump blossoms? Yeah. Um, but it will be at the base of a tree. Um, and it will be a parasite eating away at the what's left of the wood down there. So this is another wood decaying mushroom. It is. Unfortunately, just like Chicken of the Woods, you can see it grows around whatever is around it. Um, so, oh, is that know, what's going on there? You got to kind of pick out all of the stuff that it's grown around. Um, there are going to be thicker, rubbery, fleshy parts at the back here, which you can see like I'm trying to squeeze. And... Oh, look at the liquid coming out. Oh, yeah, it's very fresh. That's, that's how you know it's good. Um, but you can see by like pressing down on it, it's really pretty turgid down here. Whereas up here, nice and tender, soft. So this is kind of where we're going to want to live for the sautés for grilling. We're going to do back here. Um, and some pieces of this I'm going to dry in powder as well. Okay, I think this is a good prawn to sauté up and see how our bodies react to it. Okay, so what we're basically doing is making sure neither of us get ill off of this. Right, exactly. So whenever whenever you have a new mushroom that you're, or literally anything that you're foraging, always make sure to have a very small amount first before you gorge yourself on whatever it is that you got. Make sure that your body doesn't have an adverse reaction to it. I'm gonna cut up a couple of slices, toss it into a saute pan with a little bit of olive oil and some salt, just so that we get the flavor of it. Um, and we'll let it sit for uh, a little bit and see how it goes. It looks like a hand fan made out of a pancake. <laughs> now it smells like chickens and mushrooms. Oh, it's starting to get a little color. It sounds like applause. Yay! The crowd goes wild! It doesn't smell like a fresh baked pretzel. It 100% smells like a sweet fresh baked pretzel. So First thoughts on the taste, it's very mild. There's not much of a flavor, a little bit of mushroomy, and a little bit of that like bread flavor coming in. Uh, but the texture, it's like, it's bouncy. It's a little bit chewy, but it's not tough. This Go for this one there. So it really caramelized, and this is just in the oil. You said you put a little salt in? A little salt. It smells like a cookie. It smells like a pizzelle. It does. That's what it is. It's those Italian pizzelle cookies where they put the wand in the, totally. and then they sort of fry it. All right. It's a little sweet, just a little. I really like the texture. This could pass for vegan meat. I'm also gonna go back in for a thicker, piece to see mm. if that's like also 
You know in The Expanse when they talk about like Bobby Draper wants a nice mushroom steak, right? In the books, doesn't happen in the show. In the show, she wants an actual porterhouse. But in the books, she asks for mushroom steak after she's picked up off of the, the face of Mars. Um, this is the chew that I imagine. Mm. I would say this is about the same chew as on a, a good green olive. There's a lot more of that sweet flavor back in the thicker parts. Oh. But it is also still a, yet a little bit chewy. So if you want to try a little bite off of this end here. Oh. Yeah, there's mm. a part that needs oh. to be cooked a little bit more. That's very anisey. Oh, mm. I, mm, no. <laughs> It's, it's anise and at the same time, it's almondine. It is. I personally really like that. <clears throat> but also, yeah, we just like, I'd say for what we do tonight, mm -hmm. probably Come close, this, come close. I would not do this thick. So it looks like, you see these concentric rings here? Let me see if I can get that up to the camera. So these rings right here, I'd say probably the ring up there, this is about where we'll want to, this is the tender part and this is the part I don't like. meteor anise part. I think that's really nice, but I know anise is uncomfortable for some people. But it's anyway. It's too strong. Oh, I'm making sure that my tongue hurt. So here's what's, here's what's going to happen though. If we um, do this with a teriyaki garlic marinade, mm. like that will really, like the acidity there will really cut out a lot of that, the depth of that anise. Hmm. Also, we have the option to like cut it really thin. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So let's hold off. Let's see how we feel. And Remember I told you once these were corkscrewed all the way around, that's when we're gonna harvest them. That's what we're gonna do today. And I saw a video of somebody who had taken their escapes and twisted them into happy circles and then beer battered that business and fried it. And um, I'd like to be on that train, so we're gonna give this a shot to go with our mushrooms tonight. Come on, let's get some. Look at these fancy girls with their pigtails. So we've waited until they've gotten to this corkscrew stage and I'm gonna cut them down here, pretty close to where they originate, just like that. And then we'll wrap them once we have a whole bunch in the house. A moment, please. I'd like to visit the volunteers. All of this in here is that beautiful anise hyssop and it smells so good. I think I'm probably going to harvest some of that for teas this year. 100% y'all. That is a spoon tomato. I know the look of her. She's over here where we had so many of them trellis last year. I am actually really surprised that she's the only one. That's a thistle. That's a thistle. That's a thistle. Y'all, she spoke too soon. There's another spoon tomato. This I don't want in here. Thistle. Our friend with the fancy beak, she's looking more and more swan-like every day. Is it true? Y'all, that's a grape. Two tomatillos and a sunflower. So here's what we got out of the garden. Um, I'd say about another dry pint of strawberries and all these garlic scapes. Garlic scapes. Um, and this is what, so I've got, I've got some rolling and weaving to do here. Like that, and just kind of basket wove it inside and outside of itself. And oops, all right, let's make it tighter. And I went through Pinterest 
and I found a recipe for beer battered onion rings. So I'm gonna use their batter. Sounds good, and we still have beer. And ta-da! We're just feeding four, so that should be that should be enough to bake. Okay. Um, and then we'll get this handful to saute. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're gonna have those delicious garlic scapes. I'm nodding them up right now. To turn into onion rings or garlic rings, I suppose. Scape rings? Scape rings? The expanse? The ring? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so what do we decide that we're doing here? So I think some of the larger fronds that are all in one nice piece, mm -hmm. we're gonna marinate in some teriyaki, some mirin, some honey, and some chopped up garlic scape. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna use some of that some of that marinade to toss into a, uh, a saute with some of the other smaller, more tender fronds. Cool. I call, I call them fronds, but they're really referred, to, they are referred to as leaves. Leaves, leaves of a blossom, the stump of blossom. Love it. And in we go with the scapes. So I found a recipe that was, I mean, it looked pretty generic and I ran with it online. It was like New York Times cooking or something. I'll, I'll put down below what's going on here. We did use good beer. We did use good beer. Dos Equis not the thing to do this way. Uh, Perfect. People get a, a real look at what it's like running around your kitchen. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's fun though. Um, the, the galley design of it always makes it kind of exciting. You know what I mean? Uh, so I'm just going to fry these for like two, three minutes aside. I'm waiting for them to get golden brown. Um, oh, you look good. I use peanut oil because I like peanut oil. And I will salt these as they come out. Oh, and over here, we have our marinated Berkeley's polypore. So I think we are there. Another minute or two on the other side. Oh, they're pretty. What's going on? The crab dance. The dance of the tape. And now I will run with scissors. We are, we are done. So I'm gonna take these out and just let them degrease a little bit on a paper towel. This is how they came out. They feel like an onion ring, only knobbier. They look like the pretzel. That peanut oil. Hot peanut nice. oil. Oh, that's good. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. So the inside has the texture of like perfectly cooked asparagus. The garlickiness and that initial punch that you get when you eat it fresh has softened down and gotten mild. I really like food. Look at that pile of beauty sitting there, just waiting to be consumed, like that. <laughs> These, best onion rings you will ever have in your life. But there's no uh, onions. But there's no onion, because it's garlic scapes. We experimented with some dippy stuff because we figured it would be good with some dippy stuff. So I think the winner is the shoyu sauce, um, which, works really well with it. They're really good and they're horribly addictive. Mm -hmm. It's time. <laughs> Look at that. So how just how started long getting black. Uh this was 35 minutes 30 and I minutes. gave it a uh second marinade at 25. And it was at 400, right? 425. 425. Okay. Which it looks to have caramelized everything just to the point that I wanted it to, you know, just barely getting black. Ooh, that went 
right through Ooh. this tree supply store. So, wow. Yeah, look how look how tender that is. You just cut right into it. There's still a bit of a like a sweet anise to it. Yeah. It still has a bit of tooth, but whereas like with the pan fried, all of this is like slathered and the mushroom is covered in the sauce. So you get the flavor of the mushroom. It's sticky sweet. But with the oven, with the marinade, it's permeated. So the moment you bite into it, that flavor bursts into your mouth. All right, here we go. Cheers. It's less potent. Anise wise? Anise wise. Okay. It still tastes like there was a black jelly bean involved in this. But in a really classy way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Thank you. <laughs> I like how it turned out. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, I, I really just don't know. This is, I feel like this should be a dessert mushroom. It could be. I could see this being in the middle of like something chocolatey. Well, here's the thing though. Um, I'm going to be powdering a bunch of the like thicker, meatier parts that are gonna be too tough to cook. So maybe we powder it, we make like a maple syrup with it. Or perhaps a, even just a simple syrup. See how it works. Go, 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 go. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. You can eat lavender marsh marshmallows together. I told you about the, the Earl Grey shoe and the lavender cream that I want to make cream puffs out of, right? I'm so glad we're friends. <laughs> Are we making big ones or are you going to make like Tiny ones. Little bite-sized ones. Oh yeah, so you get just everything all in one. And I want to, I want to do that. I want to eat that with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today while we went sort of forage to table and, and garden to table for garden. Anyway, it was freaking delicious. I'll put the notes down below. We just started on cooking it. I hope you had a good time. Take care. We'll catch you up soon. Ta-da! Ta-da! Goodbye!